I've received a few viewer questions about how different aspects of the pathfinding and navigation logic work in Unto Deepest Depths, so today let's dive into those systems a bit. But before we can talk about how to navigate a level, we need to know what a level even is. In Unto Deepest Depths, levels are semi-procedurally generated. The layouts themselves are chosen from a pool of layouts that I've designed, but the contents of a given level, such as the placement and types of units you encounter, are procedurally generated based on the player's progress. The layouts are simple scenes composed of a single tile map that contains whatever design I want that map to have. The tile sets used by each layout are pretty standard, but they do contain custom data properties about how that tile should be processed during gameplay, is solid, and blocks movement. The is solid property is for walls and other cells that should block both movement and line of sight queries, whereas the blocks movement property is for low-lying objects or holes in the ground that block movement but not attacks. These two properties, plus the absence of them to signal that a cell is both open and traversable, are all I need to set up the game grid. So now let's look at how that works. When the player enters battle, the level generator selects a random map layout and loads its contents into the game. Some battles, such as against bosses or for special events, used fixed layouts that just need light initialization, but the end result will be the same. When the level generator has finished setting things up, the desired map is now a part of the level. At this point though, there is no navigation data, simply a tile map that looks correct, but still needs to be parsed into usable data, and that's where the navigation autoload comes in. As the name suggests, the navigation autoload is an autoloaded script responsible for answering questions about the grid, including how to pathfind from one cell to another, and if and where unit actions are blocked. For instance, the unit AI evaluates whether or not a move is good based on if it will move them closer to an opponent, and since autoloads are globally available, the check is quite simple to implement. Once the level tile map has been loaded, the navigation autoload takes the tile map node and generates navigation data from it using Godot's A star 2D class. This is done by iterating over every cell, creating a node in the graph for it, and connecting it to its adjacent neighbors to support the grid-based movement of Unto Deepest Steps. Note that I chose not to use the built-in A star grid 2D class as there are instances such as with teleporters where I need navigation connections that are more complex than simple grid adjacencies. As I'm building the grid, I also take the custom cell data mentioned previously and change what I'm doing depending on those properties. For is solid cells, those A star nodes are immediately disabled since they should always block everything. For blocks movement cells though, things get a bit more complicated since whether or not those cells should be considered solid or open depends on the question being asked. So those nodes are kept enabled for now, but the cell is added to a list of blocks movement cells so that I can grab them again later as needed. After all of this, the grid is initialized and the navigation on the load can start answering questions about it. So now let's look at the two primary use cases of the navigation auto load, calculating a path from one cell to another, and answering questions about unit actions. First, let's talk pathfinding. While pathfinding exists in Unto Deepest Steps, it's not actually used to let units move directly, but rather to answer AI-related questions about the distance to other units to help them determine what move to make. This is done with a singular function in the navigation auto load. This function's pretty standard for pathfinding with the A star class, but note that blocks movement cells do come into play here. To get a valid movement path, I temporarily disable all of those cells that I've previously kept track of, get a path between my desired cells, and then enable those cells that had been temporarily disabled once again. With this, the AI now knows what an actually traversable path between two cells looks like. As this is the only traditional pathfinding I do in Unto Deepest Depths, which isn't a lot, let's now look at how unit actions require the use of the grid, which gets a little more complicated. For dealing with unit actions, the specifics depend on what action is querying the navigation system. Check out my video on how units work if you need a refresher on the specifics, but the short version is that every move and every attack is defined as an array of relative coordinates and an enumerator value for how collisions or other overlaps should be handled, called the block mode. The archer, for instance, can shoot targets several cells away, but will halt its shot at the first thing it hits. As an example of how the navigation system is used, let's look at how one of its shots will get processed. To shoot to the right, the archer has an action that lists the cells 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, and 5, 0 as the cells it can hit relative to its current cell. When checking how this shot should actually be executed, it will convert these relative cell coordinates into world cell coordinates and then scan those cells in order until it finds something to hit. After converting relative coordinates to actual, the navigation function getAC block point is called. 
This function takes the desired action with its actual coordinates and returns which cell, if any, is blocking that action. This is done by checking both the A star 2D data and other game data, such as the locations of other units and objects in the game world for a potential collision. The block mode of the action will determine how to handle any collisions that do occur, such as truncating on the blocking cell, ignoring it, etc. But that is taken care of elsewhere, so the navigation autoload just needs to return the blocking cell to the caller. Note that I am glossing over some of the details of this function a little bit, as the exact code path taken is dependent on the action being checked, and it's really a bit boring as it's mostly just conditionally choosing what checks to run. And that's how I build and use navigation data in Unto Deepest Depths. The source tile map has information on the properties of each cell, that information is parsed into an A star 2D instance, and then conditionally used as required by the other elements of the game. Hopefully that helps clear a few things up. If you're looking to do something similar in your own project, do keep in mind that Unto Deepest Depths has a very specific and limited set of features compared to the typical tactics game, and I have designed my systems to meet the needs of this specific project, so don't worry about it too much if you need something a bit different.